Kerry, we're going to talk about the Foresight Mental Capital and Wellbeing Project. Mm -hmm. What were the aims of the project? Well, Foresight comes from the Government Office of Science. It's to develop evidence-based policy on a range of very important topics to the UK, like obesity, flooding, innovation, and this one was on mental capital and well-being. Think about that being a kind of bank account of the mind, which gets enhanced or depleted throughout life, from birth to death. The object of that is to collect all the evidence through the life course about what enhances and what depletes an individual's mental capital and well-being. One stream of that, or an important stream of that, is to do with work and well-being. And in that, we collected evidence on what the impact is on people's mental health and mental well-being vis-a-vis the workplace. So we do science reviews and take some of the best scientists in the world and have them do the science reviews for us. From that, we then develop policy, so it's evidence-based, policy on w how we can improve people's mental capital and well-being at work. And that's what we did. Had it been done before? No similar evidence-based policy has been done by any government in a systematic way like this. The UK government is the world leader on trying to develop evidence-based policy for government on topics of, of, of great interest. But the whole concept of mental capital has never been used before. The idea that a human being from birth, a lot of things happen to that individual when they're young and in a family and at school and at work and in old age. What are the factors that enhance their mental well-being and what depletes it. And that's really important. That's never been done before. So we have now the science, we also have the policies, and we also have done cost-benefit analysis on the policies to see for every buck we put in, what are the bucks we get back for introducing that kind of policy. So what were the recommendations and what are the implications for organizations? The recommendations in terms of the work and well-being part of Foresight, there were a whole range of them, but let me give you some highlights. One was that managers are responsible for people's well-being. That if you have bad, ineffective managers, they damage people's health. So there was a whole series of recommendations about we need to train managers to manage people by praise and reward and not just by fault finding. That their behavior and their management style can actually motivate and enhance people's well-being, but it can deplete it as well. And that's a critical dimension. So it's all about training managers to manage people properly and manage their health properly. A second one had to do with uh, flexible working arrangements. Two out of every three families in the UK are working families. And that's really important, that both members of the family are now working or there's a single parent working family. That is the average family now. It's not a man at work and a woman at home. That, that uh, went a couple decades ago, gradually over the last couple decades. So the issue now, given that we're no longer a manufacturing country, and many countries in the West are no longer manufacturing, that's done in the East now, that we're service-based economy, that what's important now is managing people. And the thing that causes people the most stress and lack of well-being is the, the inflexible working arrangements because they need that more than now, if, more than ever before, if families are two earner now. And also in Britain, for example, we have the longest working hours in Europe, by far. So here is a family, both members working, working really long hours, and it's damaging potentially their health, because the evidence shows if you consistently work long hours, you will get ill. That's what the evidence shows. It will also damage the family and also damage the productivity of the individual and ultimately the organization. So we need flexible working arrangements. The science tells us flexible working arrangements improves health, it improves uh, productivity, and so on. So basically what we, we came up with is that we need the right to request flexible working arrangements, by the way, not just for people, uh, for working people or working couples with kids, but flexible working arrangements for all because the science shows that it, it's more effective. if it, if the right to request it is for everybody, not just those with kids. So that was another element of it. And a third element, well, there were so many different aspects of it, but a third one was a lot of people in the UK are employed in the SME sector, small and medium-sized enterprises. And very little has been done for the SME sector in this arena. 
improving well-being. Quite a lot's been done on basic training and skills and things like that, but not in this arena. So again, we have a series of recommendations about how we can help, how we should maybe set up a, a, some kind of commission to help the SME sector to deal with these kinds of issues. And another one that we've come up with in this is that if organizations engage in well-being audits, because the instruments are out there to do this, and do these audits, and then actually change the organization based on the audit. It's like an employee survey, because the psychometrics are out there to be able to do stress audits and well-being audits of all employees. And then the organization looking at it, not about a particular individual, because it's done anonymously, but can tell the organization, you have problems in that area of your business, and that's your problem. And that you have that problem, and that's the underlying reason for it. But the rest of the organization is fine then the organization can direct its resources to solving specific problems in the organization that are there. And again, we found that works, and there's a cost-benefit to it. So for every pound you put in, you'll get two and a half to three pounds back if you do the audit and then change and do something about it. So there's a whole series of recommendations based on the science about what we can do to improve employee health.